Today on Mr. Armageddon Builds, we're taking a look at the new Nanoleaf Shapes Mini Triangles. Let's get going. Hey guys, Zane here, and welcome to Mr. Armageddon Builds. Today we're going to look at a new product from Nanoleaf, the Shapes Mini Triangles. Most of you are probably aware of the Nanoleaf light panels that have been featured on a lot of workstation pictures and showcases, but this is a new product as of October 2020. We're going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing comparison, and review both the mini triangles and the Nanoleaf app used to set up and control your shapes. Let's get started. Let's roll through some quick product specs and see how these mini triangles compare to larger light panels. You can see here they're roughly half the physical size, but still about one centimeter thick in design. And here we have the general specs to see what for the most part looks to be about the same for both the original panels and the mini triangles. Uh, the mini triangles still only communicate over a 2.4 gigahertz wireless network, so nothing has changed there. The one big difference to call out here is that the lumens drop when going from the light panels to the mini triangles, you know, going from 100 lumens to 20. Now, that being said, at max brightness, these mini triangles can really light up a room, so I really wouldn't be overly concerned about that particular specification. Here we see that both types of panels support the same color spectrum. And in regards to power, the mini triangles have a smaller power supply, which makes sense if the lumens output is in fact lower than the larger light panels. The website states that you can connect up to 77 mini triangles to a single power supply. But I noticed that in the application, when setting up the design of your mini triangles and your shape, it states that you cannot go more than 21 mini triangles off a single power supply. So I'm going to contact Nanoleaf to get clarification on that one. And here we have what Nanoleaf is calling their Smarter Kit. It's essentially what you need to get started with these mini triangle shape kits. And so this one comes with the power supply, all the connectors, the adhesive tabs, and five mini triangles. So the Smarter Kit will get you started, but five shapes isn't a whole lot to work with. So here we have the Expansion Kit. The expansion kit includes nine mini triangles, all your connectors, and your adhesive pads. It does not include the control brick or the power supply, so obviously you need those from the Smarter Kit to make these function. Here I have a mock design just to show what Nanoleaf calls their linkers and how they connect the triangles and the controller. The linkers have three connector pins, and there are little compression tabs that allow you just to snap it into place. They do hold pretty well, but don't try to build the design and then hang it on your wall. You'll fail and it'll come crashing down. Instead, use the design feature in the Nanoleaf app to plan out your design and then begin to build it on your wall. This is their layout assistant, and although there is no way to select colors here, you can design the overall shape based on the number of panels you'll be using. And you can change the number of panels by hitting this bar right here and going up or down. Uh, based on whatever kits you have. And once you have the number of panels selected, you basically just drag around the pieces to build your design. Uh, if you do not have it laid out correctly or one of the panels can't get power, it will show invalid layout down in the bottom right hand corner. But basically, once you have your shape completed, uh, you can move on to the next step, which is the AR mode, where you can basically see the design on your wall. Now this works okay on a flat wall with nothing else in the frame, you know, no pictures, no curtains. But as you can see here, if there are other objects nearby, it doesn't work out too well. Now my intention is to have this above my computer, so I was kind of bummed that I couldn't utilize the AR feature uh, very well in this instance. Now I'm going to quickly go through how to set up and connect your panel to the application and your Wi-Fi network. I will say that this was by far the most frustrating part of the installation process for me due to connectivity issues, but more on that in a bit. Creating an account is optional, but I would suggest doing it as it allows you to back up your designs and color scenes for later retrieval. Before selecting the shapes from this screen, make sure your panels are plugged into the wall and powered on. Select the Shapes tab, and it will remind you that in order to connect, you need to be on your 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi connection. It will show a list of available 2.4 GHz networks to choose from, and then ask for a password to connect. Now, on my first run, this worked fine, and everything connected with that issue. But after the initial pairing, the light panels kept becoming unresponsive, and I wasn't able to control it via the app. 
After a few hard resets and moving closer to my router, I was finally able to get it to work, but it was not fun. None of the other 40 plus devices on my network have any issues, so I'm putting the blame directly on Natalie for this. I'm not sure if it's an issue that can be addressed via a firmware update, or if the Wi-Fi antenna on the controller is just far too small, but whatever the reason, if you aren't in pretty close proximity to your router, you may experience similar issues. All right, so we're connected, it's installed the wall. Let's go ahead and go through some of the configuration options that there are within the app. Now, I'm just gonna really briefly touch on these because there's honestly too much to go through. Uh, it's pretty intuitive, so you can figure this out and decide how you wanna customize fully. So let's look at a few of those options and then wrap this video up. After connecting, head over to your devices tab and select the layout of your panels. By default, there is a pre-selected list of solid light fills, multicolor, and even interactive music scenes to choose from, in addition to being able to adjust the overall brightness of your panels. You can go with one of these or hit the Add Scene button to create your own customized look. Again, you can utilize existing color palettes here or add new to create your own from scratch using RGB sliders or even plugging in the color code directly into the app. Once you have your custom color palette, you can choose between a motion design that will fade between the colors you selected, or you can go with a static color design, choosing the color for each panel individually. Once your colors are selected, save your design. You should be able to save it and apply it to your panels. Well, after experimenting with a few other options, this is the design that I ended up going with above my PC. It's using 21 panels, but I have a few more left over from my expansion kits and I might add those to the mix down the road once I get clarification on the number of panels I can utilize with this power supply. Also, once this product is available on Amazon, I'll be sure to add a product link to the video description. To wrap up this video, despite all the connection issues I initially had, overall, I'm happy with how this accessory ad turned out. The size is just about perfect and it frames my open air computer and adds some nice fill light to my workspace when the overhead fluorescent bulbs are just a bit too harsh. I hope this video helped give you a better idea of what to expect from this product. Hit me up with any questions, and if you guys think a different design or shape would look better by my PC, let me know in the comments. I'm getting ready to completely rebuild this system, so be on the lookout for that as well. I also have lots of other product videos on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, hit me with a thumbs up, and as always, your subscription helps. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.